Now let's just stop for a moment and think about the line of best fit that we found in the last example when we looked at five students' height and weight. And in fact, they weren't even real people. I just made up the data so that we could practice finding R, Pearson's correlation coefficient, and so that we could practice finding A and B, which will give us the equation of the line of best fit. So we managed to do that calculator work and we got something out of it, but really it would be remiss if we didn't stop and have a look at what we got and how on earth we could use it. Because we've already touched on the fact that there were, there were a few things about this line that aren't really going to be helpful at all. For a start, if we graph this line of best fit, it has a y-intercept of minus 39, and you can't be minus 39 kilograms. Obviously, you can't have any of this section of the graph making any sense. Now, if the data isn't linear, we're not expected in this course to come up with an equation that models it. We are looking at linear data, and we've seen how we can find a and b so that we can find the gradient and the y-intercept. But we always need to take into account that there could be limitations on how we use that line, even if the data is linear. Now, height and weight is worth examining for a moment, partly because there's a nice crossover here with the PDHPE course, but also just with life and just generally thinking about how things fit together. Now, one of the best ways to think about the relationship between height and weight might be to examine a simpler shaped figure than the human body. We've got all these arms and legs and bits and pieces, makes it difficult for us to analyze what's going on. But if I look at a shape as simple as a cube, it makes it a little bit simpler to discover a few little home truths that might bust our myth about this linear relationship. This cube that I've drawn has actually got lengths, side lengths that are twice as long as this cube. And you can see that because if I hold that up there, you can see that the side length is roughly double. But how much more volume does this cube have than this one? Well, you would fit eight of these little cubes into this big one. And that's because it's not only twice as wide, it's twice as tall and twice as deep. And two times two times two is eight. So if these were filled with water, you'd expect this one to be eight times as heavy, even though it's only twice as tall. And you can use that justification to think about whether human beings might have a similar relationship going on. If you look at someone who is only half your height, you would expect that they're probably not half your weight, they may actually only be one eighth of your weight. And this actually sort of rings true. If you take someone who's about my height, say 170 centimetres, halve it, an 85 centimetre person is actually just a toddler. And there's a good chance that they are around about one eighth of my weight. I mean, maybe not perfect, but they're certainly not, not half of my weight. So in fact, fitting a straight line to this data at all might have been perhaps incorrect, or perhaps it's okay to do for this data, but we could only use it to interpolate in this region, and it wouldn't be any good for extrapolating about people who are taller or shorter. So then it could be that a cubic curve is a much better model for the relationship or association between height and weight in people. And we know that a cubic curve looks something like this. Obviously, only the section that goes from here up makes sense. Now, a person that has zero height would have zero weight, but it also makes sense that a baby who's around about 50 centimetres long is around about three to four kilos. And so obviously, your, your curve would start somewhere there. Now, when you zoom in to any single part of a cubic curve, there's a good chance that the data might look like it's modelled well by a straight line. And that tells us why we need to be cautious of assigning a straight line to something too quickly. Now, people's understanding of that relationship between something as simple as height and weight is generally quite poor because they don't think these sorts of things through. And that's why you often get people being really surprised by little differences in height and weight. A classic example would be uh, two friends who are really similarly proportioned, uh, neither of them is fatter or skinnier, you could say, than the other. But if one is 5% taller than the other, they often expect to be around about 5% heavier too, but they wouldn't be. If humans actually have a height to weight ratio similar to cubes, you'd expect them to be more like 1.05 cubed, which is roughly 1.15 or 15% heavier. And the tall person often feels almost a little bit like, oh, am I, am I fat or something? But no, if you're 5% taller, you're potentially also 5% deeper and 5% wider, and it could look exactly the same proportion-wise, and be around about 15% heavier. 